thought I'd jump on to talk about something that I've been really reflecting on and realising over the last week or so, and which might be helpful for you in terms of navigating your journey. So this is for you if you're in a kind of spiritual journey of some kind, you may already feel you've had an awakening or an, an enlightenment experience as they often sometimes get called, and you feel like you're in the, um, I guess the unraveling phase or the dark night of the soul or the, 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 the stage at which some level of the lid of control has come off and now all sorts of challenging and confronting and turbulent human experiences might be coming up for you. And so we're then presented with a, a landscape which is quite um, new, seemingly new to us, because it's often showing us stuff that we've kept hidden from ourselves or we've suppressed or denied or avoided. And, and yet here it is. Now, here it is. Like I say, the lid has come off, at least to some extent. And so these things are able to come back into your experience that you've kind of worked so hard all your life to keep hidden, to keep away, to avoid. So, um, yeah, so it occurred to me how there are kind of three broad camps of how we navigate this part of the journey. And it made me realise how helpful it might be to share these with you because sometimes when we have um, an experience which we know is happening really but when we have it mirrored back to us and especially if we can have it mirrored back to us in a kind of a, a sort of conceptual map kind of way a conceptual model kind of way then it helps us more easily navigate it it kind of gives us that yeah map to navigate the journey by it's why when sarah Priestley and i wrote our book the complete book of awakening it was very much about providing a map, knowing that everybody's journey is unique, but this is the map of the landscape of awakening. And so similar with this, if I was to give this a, um, a category, this is a map, a map, not the map, there is not a the map, but is a map for the experience of enlightenment which for me is the clearing of the human conditioning, the lightening of the human conditioning, because we don't get a fully light and enjoyable, complete experience unless we address the human as well as the spiritual. And enlightenment is very much, in my mind, focused on the human. So this is to provide a really simple conceptual map of the kind of ways we can lighten the human experience so that you can check for yourself and kind of, kind of I guess, discern and differentiate between different approaches and what feels right for you at any particular time. And I really want to emphasize that, right for you at any particular time. There is only you on your journey. So there is only what's right for you at any particular moment, which may well not be right for other people. Maybe not at that time, maybe never, but it's right for you at that moment. And importantly, at that moment, because that might be the absolutely perfect thing for you to do at that moment. And then that moment might pass and it might be time for something else. And that's really what I've seen through my journey, how it's evolved and in fact kind of evolved through all three of the things I'll be talking about today. All three of, three of these like, what would the word be? Markers or... Huh, what's it called if you're on a on a journey and there's a like checkpoint? Yeah. yeah, it's not quite checkpoint, but yeah, anyway, <laughs> I've navigated through all three of these. So, yeah, so, so that's enough context, I think. Let's talk about these three things, three broad categories of ways that we enlighten the human system so that you can then check in and go either what I want now is something in this category or you might be able to go oh this thing I'm doing now is this category and it also therefore might have you have your attention on when this stops being the thing for me what's the next thing that's right for me so the three categories are going for the positive but quite a unique way of doing that so not positive psychology stuff I'll say more in a moment but going for the positive going for inclusion 
or going for clearing. And each of these really is an emphasis rather than a discrete separate category from the others. It's kind of a, I guess like in the Enlightenment event, if you've been following along with that, it's a doorway. Each of these three are doorways, which are also connected to the others but we are drawn to one doorway or, or another at any particular point in time. So let's start with going for the positive. And I really, really want to highlight with this one how this isn't about overlaying something seemingly positive over something seemingly rubbish. So I used to do that. That was my old way. In positive psychology land, it was, and whether I under, misunderstood positive psychology, I don't know, but it was very much a, well, this seems a bit rubbish. So I'm going to put a positive spin on it. I'm going to take that negative thought and I'm going to rewrite it as a positive thought to shift into positive. Now, to be fair, it wasn't entirely useless. It did have an effect on my experience. It just wasn't the ultimate effect that I needed. So that positive psychology was right for a moment in time for me on my journey. But I soon saw how it was just putting some positive over the top of something that felt a bit rubbish. And so it wasn't the ultimate solution for me. Not with some, some things it was enough, other things it wasn't. And cool, because then that brought me into this going for positive, which really means going for what feels easier, going for what feels more natural, going for what feels more effortless and easy. So the particular way I came across that was through the three principles. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the way that we approach things when something difficult's coming up, when we're caught up in thinking, when we're caught up in experience and we see that, and we go, oh, that's not me. That's not in alignment. And we're able to ease off and go, oh, that feels better. So that if I'm caught up, rather than following what I might have done before and go out into the world, judging and criticizing and trying to control and micromanage, it's catching sight of that before sort of spreading it and projecting it into the world. And it's coming back to yourself. People might talk about it as grinding back in yourself, coming back to presence, coming back to centre. Eckhart Tolle has talked a lot about this kind of approach. The kind of notice the thing, notice that you're caught up, notice that it's not the truth of who you are, and find some way of easing off, of easing back, going for the positive because it feels better to ease off. It feels more true to who we are to ease off than to be caught up in that lostness of a, of a mind confused about who we really are and to project that and kind of vomit that onto the world. So going for positive really is meaning that that settling approach that, ah, okay, I don't need to follow that. I don't need to engage with that. It feels better in me to ease off to take my foot off the gas, to breathe, to centre, to ground, to come back to who I am, and then move forward from there. And so this is and can be all that some people need. It might be for a moment in time, but it might be what somebody does for the whole of the rest of their journey. That all they do is catch sight of the moment when it all looks like it's rubbish, and go, oh, that feels rubbish. That's not the truth of who I am. Let me ease back into who I truly am. Let me, let me step back into the good feeling, the positive feeling of myself. Not the positive feeling of an overlaid thought that says it's all okay, it's all fine, it's all good. The positive good feeling of ourself, grounded, present, here, now. So going for positive, is the first category and it was the first one that I met on my journey. In fact I very first met it through Transcendental Meditation before I even got to the three, 
three principles. And mindfulness or meditation are often ways that people first meet this one. The opportunity to settle back, to come back to yourself, to breathe, to be present. So that's going for positive. The first category of three ways that we can enlighten our system. So the second category, going for inclusion. So one of the things that I came to realize, particularly on the back of awakening, was the inclusion of all experience. So when I was still fully identified as a person, there was a massive amount of resistance going on with certain experiences. There were things that were absolutely shameful that I could not talk about. I mean, not big stuff. You know, it might have been things like, oh, an email didn't land with some people, or um, I put a social media post out and nobody liked it, or I promoted a course and nobody signed up for it. It was like, it wasn't massive, really, truly shameful stuff, but it really felt like stuff I couldn't talk about. There might have been things in my life, relationships that, oh God, no, I can't talk about that. And then on the back of awakening, my capacity to be what would be called vulnerable from the outside grew massively. But not because I was trying to be vulnerable. It now just made sense to talk about stuff. It's like, why would I not talk about that? That's been a useful process for me. That's been a useful lesson for me. That's been a useful insight for me. Why would I not share about that? Why would I not talk to people about that? And so my community has been one of the main places I've done that and really shared my really close journey with the people who are in there. And, and it also through that journey, through that stage of my journey, really showed that inclusion of all. It really showed the, <laughs> the futility of trying to reject or resist an experience. Because if I'm feeling shame, then that's what's here. It's completely pointless to try and reject or resist it because it's already happening. If I'm feeling worried, if I'm feeling doubt, if I'm feeling nervous, if I'm feeling uncertain, if I'm feeling stressed or frustrated, although actually stress was pretty minor by this point, but yeah, frustrated was still happening. And so there was this point at which there was like this full inclusion of all of the human experience. Like, why would I bother trying to push any of this away? It's the recognition of this as it is right now. And rather than just recognizing it and stepping back, like we did with, with category number one, they're going for positive. With inclusion, it's the recognizing and staying with it. Even going deeper into it sometimes. But absolutely recognizing this is how it is. And it's already here and included. So I'm going to sit here very consciously as the presence that we are and include this experience, be with this experience, be present with this experience. Which might include things like observing the sensations. Might include things like writing the thoughts out as they are. Might include going deeper with the sensations into a conversation with them, to understand them, to, to understand the dynamics that are playing out on that deeper level, to hear, to listen, to acknowledge, to see the absolute logic of whatever is playing out in the system, to see how from this, this emotional system particularly, from its, from its experience and from the stories that have been added to that, how this reaction right now makes absolute perfect sense. To go, yes, I see you. Yes, I get you. I understand you. And to see that without this being the intention, that whatever this is that's happening, being seen, being understood, being included, then naturally transforms into something else. 
really importantly, not because we're trying, no agenda of trying to make it something else, purely the capacity to be with it as it is. And only available when we're really grounded in that space of presence, which as I say for me, only became available on the back of awakening, awakening to the truth of who we are, our essential spiritual nature. So that's our second category, going for inclusion, where it's the seeing, the including, the being with this exactly as it is, staying with it, not doing the going for positive where we ease back into a good feeling, which is fine, it has its place. This was like a next stage for me. Oh, now that I know I'm this presence, now I can include whatever this human experience is here. It can be felt. It can be experienced. I can experience this and be okay. There is nothing to fear. Really, truly becoming unafraid of our experience. I can experience disappointment. I can experience failure. I can experience shame and guilt and doubt. It's all okay. It's all included. I am okay in the experience of all of this. And then, yes, yeah, sometimes going deeper to truly understand the logic behind why my system is reacting in this. So that's our second category, going for inclusion. And then the third category came online. It had kind of already been there, really had already been there, really from 2021. Or well, beginning of 2022, round about that turning point, 21 into 22, in fact, that was the beginning of me first experimenting with, exploring, being in the world of energetic clearing. So at this one, number three, we're going for clearing. So I was experimenting with it all the way back then, 21 into 22. But it only really started becoming clearer through... Yes, later on in 22, 23, and really strongly now in 2024. So I started practicing energy transmissions in 2021, and then really properly from 2022. And my transmissions always seem to be more angled towards clearing uh, human conditioning rather than awakening. So I have used them for awakening. I do use them for awakening but their emphasis for me always seemed to be about clearing the human conditioning. And so it's, it's, it's practices, modalities, experiences like this that are clearing, not just easing off from in going for positive, not just, just including as we did in the second one, but actually saying, no, you, you really don't belong in this system. You're really not a natural part of this human system. Like you're loved, you're included. I absolutely see you. And no, you're, you're not part of my natural expression. You don't need to stay. So the same as we might um, clean the house, brush our teeth, so we're clearing, clearing the house of dust. I see you dust and no, I don't want you in my house. I see you plaque on my teeth and no, I don't want you to stay there because you're not in alignment with the health of my teeth and my mouth. I see you belly fat and you're okay. It doesn't make me wrong or bad to have belly fat. And no, the, there's potential health impacts of having internal fat. I'm, I'm going to take some steps to look at that, to address that for my health. Not in order to achieve some idea of beauty for the health of my human system. I see you long fingernails and you're making typing and washing up and ironing and gardening really hard. So no, I'm not including you in my experience for the health of my human life. And so the same with when we're going for clearing, the easiest, most healthy place to clear from is from knowing the inclusion of it, 
and then saying, and no. No, you, you don't belong in this system. You're not the natural expression of this system. You're not the truth of me in my most pure, clear, unique expression. You've been collected at some point along the way. You've been gathered at some point along the way and you're not part of my natural makeup. And so as I say, this is where things like energy clearings, energy transmissions come in. It's where the new modality I'm learning comes in. And there are more and more people, it seems, in the world who are now offering services like this to clear old energetic patterns from our system, to clear these collected things from our systems, because they aren't truly who we are. They have been collected along the way. They have been inherited. They don't truly belong to us, and they're not truly in support of our overall human health. And that is what we're always interested in. Another way of saying that, we're interested in survival. But beyond that, we're interested in thriving. We're interested in having the most fulfilled and fulfilling lives. The most rich lives, the most engaged lives, the most connected lives with people we love and care about. The most enjoyable lives. And that happens most easily in the absence of all of this stuff that we've either been stepping back from, including, or now, clearing. Because in the, in the in, with any of these three modalities, every single time what we're doing is either reducing or removing the resistance in our system. Because resistance in our system stems the flow of how and who we naturally are. That's all that's ever going on that stems the flow, resistance of some kind. Something in our system saying, no, not this, or no, not like this. And we all have been conditioned into a lot of resistance in our experience. So all of these three ways are either reducing or removing that resistance so that what is left all that can be left in the absence of that resistance is the beautiful natural flow of who we are. The unique natural expression of who we are in our fullness. In our unapologetic, this is me. With no need for somebody outside of us to approve of us. With no need for somebody to say yes to us first before we can say yes to ourselves the pure natural expression of us that feels so right, we are already saying yes to ourselves just because it's so damn obvious. Not from an arrogance, not from a, I'm, I, I'm so good, I'm better than you. No, it's just a very quiet, natural, I'm good, I'm valuable, I'm worthy, I deserve. And from that quiet recognition of those those truths then flows that freedom and fullness of expression without anybody outside of us needing to say yes you're valuable yes you're worthy yes you deserve we know it quietly for ourselves because all of the stuff that we'd collected over the top of that truth has been reduced or removed and this for me is is always what's mattered to me this is from the very, very beginning, from when I very first learned about limiting beliefs and started to engage in psychology based coaching. That was what mattered to, to me, removing these false limitations for a more full expression. And then through these three categories that I've shared today, I've moved through an ever deepening journey of clearing, reducing, removing these false limitations, which aren't the truth of who we are and which are resisting the fullness of the truth of who we are, the fullness of the unique expression that we really are. And so it's, and it's perfect, it's all perfect. Everything has gone perfectly, is going perfectly for you in order that you find what's the next thing for me? 
which of these three categories is right for me now or next? Do I want more of the going for positive and the easing off and just, oh, there's a thing, I'm just going to step back for a moment. Do you want more of going for the inclusion and really truly being with this experience as it is? Or is it three? Are you going for more clearing? Whether you've perhaps tried the first two and you're now like, there's still some stuff. There's still some stuff here which is not going or not going as much as I want it to. And now I just want it done. Now I just want it cleared. Wherever you are, whichever ever of these is right for you next, is right for you next. As I say, I've got, <laughs> I've tried all three and probably more that I haven't even thought about for today's video. But trust that the one that is right for you is the one that is right for you right now. And if these, if these three categories help you discern and differentiate and identify, oh, this is an inclusion modality. Oh, this is a going for positive modality. Oh, this is a going for clearing modality. If that helps you discern and differentiate and therefore choose more, the words coming to mind are accurately and coherently in integrity, then amazing. I love that because I love when we find the right next thing for us, then magic happens, then magic happens. So I really hope this has been useful for you to help provide that map of the kinds of modalities that are available for enlightening your human system of this collected conditioning, these collected confusions that we've gathered along the way from ancestors, from previous lives, from this life, Wherever it comes from, it has the same effect here and now. And these three ways are ways of lightening that, of reducing or removing that resistance. Now, if you want more of the inclusion option, we've got the enlightenment event, which I mentioned earlier. So, and I say the inclusion option, we actually have some clearing options in there as well. As I said before, these are doorways, they're not absolutes, they're not truly separate. So in the enlightenment event, the doorway is primarily inclusion. The doorway is primarily, let's see this as it is and include it. Let's see this as it is and include it because it already is. So to try and resist or deny or pretend is literally futile. So that's the main emphasis in the Enlightenment event, the inclusion of all of our human experience and the recognition that our spiritual nature is that which includes all of our experience. Because we cover that whole gambit. Is that the right word? Gambit? Gamut? That whole thing. So we cover that whole uh, landscape. We include all of the human and we recognise the spiritual nature that includes it all. As well as topping and tailing that with, first of all, making visible what's even here for that and closing off with holistic where we see that, that wholeness of the uniqueness of you just as you are. So if you're interested in this, the doors are now open. Today is 29th of July. And the doors are open and are going to now stay open for you to come into this journey at any point for as long as you want or as little as you want. You might want to come in just for one particular module. You might want to come in for the whole six months that we've done so far and which is continuing to the end of October. You might want to come in and do a couple of months that really speak to you and in the time scale that works for you. So this is now like an open playing field for you to design and make it work in the way that is right for you, for you to consider which modalities are really speaking to you right now. As I say, they pretty much all have this emphasis of inclusion with a little bit of an edge of clearing, particularly through some of the energy transmissions that are in there. 
So if you're interested, we have three payment options purely to work with your budget. There is no difference in what you receive when you join. It's purely to recognize the fact that the program is worth the top amount of 333. And for some people that will feel absolutely appropriate to pay that 333. But for other people, it might just be out of reach. And therefore we've offered also 177 or 87 pounds. Their monthly payments, they work like a subscription. So for as long as you stay in, you pay that month much each month. And if you want to leave, then you leave. If you want to come back on a different payment level, you come back on a different payment level. It's so flexible. This program is so flexible. You entirely make it work for you, both in terms of the content, but also in terms of fin financials. And if you need any help in terms of where to focus, where to start, what might be the thing for you, then please do get in touch. I'll put the um, website link in the in the comments of this video so you can get in touch and you can ask and we can have a conversation but really truly it's it's the most incredible journey the incredible program which has unfolded incredibly but the people who've been in there have been having incredible shifts around minds getting quieter physical systems getting lighter of contractions that have been held for so long insights dropping in about experiences that haven't been seen before it really is the most the most phenomenal program and huge huge gratitude both to the people who've been in there as part of the programs as the group members and also to the experts i haven't even mentioned that in this video but this program has only been possible because of the 12 experts who came in to host 12 workshops throughout this six month program or at least the first six months of the programme. If you want to see more about them, I mean, there are loads of clips. Again, I'll put some playlists below. Um, the Enlightenment Summit is a great place to see all of them if you want to get a taste of them, first of all. And in fact, what we I haven't said about this for a little while, actually, what happens is that if you were to invest in the Enlightenment Summit, which was like the precursor to this programme starting. It gave an introduction to all of these experts and what they do and why they do it and how it works. It's £75 for that Enlightenment Summit to get access to all of that content. If you do that, if you invest in that, and then later want to come into the Enlightenment event, we'll provide you with £75 credit so that you have that taken off your first month of the enlightenment event so have that as, as in consideration as an option that if you're not sure if you're like well i don't really know and i don't know which modalities i might be interested in and i don't know which is really speaking to me and therefore which months to engage with the enlightenment summit is a great way to get that overview it was done over three days with four conversations a day so it's totally doable to listen to in a short space of time and then, and each call actually, by the way, was only like 30 to 45 minutes on purpose to make it doable within that time period. So you could use that as your like test bed to see, huh, is this interesting? Do I like the feel of these people? Do I like the sign of the modalities they're bringing? If you do, then having invested that £75 in the summit, we then provide you with £75 off your first month in the Enlightenment event. By the way, all those summit conversations are included in the event as well. So you're, yeah, winning all over the place. So, yeah, does it feel good? Does it feel like what you're you're after? Does it feel like what you're ready for? Does it feel like you're in this place of you've done some going for positive and now you're ready for some going for some for inclusion? And indeed, there is also going for clearing mixed in with all of that as well. Any questions, do get in touch. Me and my assistant Katie would love to help you. And I look forward to hearing from you and meeting you. Or at the very least, seeing you here on another video soon. Much love. See you soon. Take care.